If you use an AI coding tool, are you into vibe coding or spec-driven development? Today, we will review Kiro, the new agentic IDE released by AWS. And it's taking a completely different approach to AI-assisted programming. Spoiler alert, it's nothing like a typical AWS product. You will hear my honest take with unfiltered thoughts and true pros and cons. Make sure to watch till the end. You will see what it's like to use it to build an app from a specification, how Kiro is different from any other AI coding editors, and what my overall verdict is. Kiro is an agentic IDE, a VS Code fork by AWS. We can log in with Google and GitHub. No AWS account is required. So it honestly does not feel like an AWS product at all. My guess is that this is probably the most loved and fastest growing AWS product released since AWS Lambda. So what is different about it? Kiro embraces what I call spec-driven development. If in most AI IDEs, you have to do some very intentional prompting to craft well-designed specification documents and handhold your AI assistant into following them, Kiro makes specifications a first-class citizen. At the time of me recording this, Kiro has been out for about three days, and I tried it with a couple of projects. First, I want you to see what it's like, so we will build a tech Wordle app from scratch, and then I will share my opinion on Kiro in general. All right, this looks familiar, basically a VS code with an AI, I am opting into a specification mode. Let me start with a simple prompt and show you how different this approach is. I'm going to type build a simple but visually appealing tech wordle game. In cursor, this would immediately start generating code, but watch what Kiro does instead. It responds, I'll help build a visually appealing tech wordle game. Let's start creating a spec for the feature. You see that there is no code yet. It's going into a specification mode first. And look, it's generating a comprehensive requirements document. We're talking user stories, acceptance criteria, technical requirements. It is thinking about responsive design, accessibility, color schemes for different game states, scoring algorithms. Now it says, do the requirements look good? So we can move on to the design. I'm going to approve these requirements and move to phase two. Now it says that it will create the design document based on the approved requirements. It's creating a technical architecture diagram, component hierarchies, state management patterns, generating code interfaces for the game state. Look at the diagrams, data flow for game logic, component structure, user interaction patterns. So now Kiro asks for feedback on the design. I'm approving this too and want to move forward to the step where it splits it into tasks. Now it says that it will create the implementation plan with tasks and creates the tasks.md file. Look at this breakdown. Each task has specific acceptance criteria, dependencies, and test requirements. Task one, set up project structure, Task 2, core game logic implementation. Task 3, user interface development, and so on. Now I'm going to ask it to implement the plan. I can turn on autopilot mode, the toggle in the bottom right, to let it become an autonomous developer working through the task list. This took about 30 minutes in real time. It's systematically working through each task, implementing the game logic, setting up state management, writing CSS for visual design, it may occasionally ask if I trust it to run certain commands, but otherwise it's completely autonomous. All right, uh, let's test the game. I'm going to enter the first tech words that come to mind, not trying to win this game in the moment. The interface looks good. The game mechanics are solid, but I'm noticing a couple of issues. First, it only allows tech-related words as guesses. You can't type in a guess that is unrelated to tech. Second, the word lengths are inconsistent. So if I'm guessing five letter words, the answer shouldn't be only four letters like Java. So I will go back to Kiro and describe that two changes are needed. 
So we need to let users put in any word as their attempts, but always have a tech word as the correct answer. Also, the length of the correct word should be equal to the length of the guess word. So if users are entering five letter words, the answer should also be five letters. And also we need to ensure that the game state resets if the user wants to start a new game. So let's watch how it handles this feedback. We will give it a chance to make the changes and check back once it's done. Now let's quickly validate if it got fixed. Give it a run through again. We will try to win this game this time. Let's put cloud, cash, some other guesses. And we guessed the word, it was model. Now that you've seen Kiro in action, let me break down the key things that make it different. First, this is spec-driven development approach. Creating requirements.md, design.md, tasks.md before executing gives you full control over the entire process. So you're not just hoping that AI interprets your prompt correctly, you can verify and validate the plan at each stage. Autopilot mode is great, you can watch it work, it's methodical, it follows the plan. Which brings me to the second point, you can intervene anytime. If you want to adjust something in the spec, design or implementation, just tell it and it adapts everything downstream without you starting over. Third, Kira also supports agent hooks. These listen for file events. When you save a file, Kiro can automatically update tests, documentation, or run quality checks. And number four, it's a powerful concept of agent steering. If you open an existing project, you can ask it to generate steering docs. So it creates product.md for your vision and features, structure.md, documenting your project organization, and tech.md, covering your technology stack. So this gives Kiro context about how your team works. Now I will share some of the things I thought could be improved. First, to me, it's been noticeably slower than other AI agents I've used. On the day of release, I gave it a real world spec for execution. It created a design and then worked on it for about nine hours straight. So, and it got the solution to be about 95% there with about 15 to 20 minutes of manual code tweaks and corrections from me. My guess is that maybe it was related to the load the product was experiencing, which is related to my second point here. I wasn't able to use the latest Claude model, so I had to test with Claude Sonnet 3.7 instead of Claude Sonnet 4. And that's your only choice. It only has Claude models available, so no O3, no Gemini, also no Opus 4 from what I've seen. I have no doubt the demand bottleneck will be solved though. Point number three, something you have to take into account, and I think this is important. Sometimes in the way it splits the goal into tasks, you can't test a working version of the app until it completes almost all the tasks. So some things stay broken between task completions until almost the very end. My recommendation here is to be explicit and tell it that you want to test intermediate versions after specific tasks to make sure everything is runnable. So that maybe this is less of a Kiro issue and more of a how is a specification split into different tasks. This will let you iterate better and catch any deviations earlier. Here's my overall opinion. I really like Kiro. Even despite the rough edges around higher demand than expected, the AWS team has built something genuinely different and valuable. I can see how much thought and developer-centric thinking the team has put into building this. AWS has some of the smartest engineers, so I'm sending my congrats to the engineering team, product team, and the developer relations team. My advice to AWS is to continue thinking of Kiro as a tool that any developer would want to make their favorite. This means, please add all the models. Let developers choose the right tool for the job and make it faster. Also think about the next innovation that you want to bring to Kiro and don't wait because it may only be a matter of time when 
other agentic IDEs decide to add spec-driven development features into their own products. I hope you liked this video, make sure to subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in the next video.